Hi, my name is Eli Kranzberg, and welcome to Vacuum Pro Explained. In this series, we're going to look at everything you need to know to get the most out of Vacuum Pro, whether you're tweaking your own sounds or programming from scratch. And in a more general sense, we're going to look at subtractive synthesis, since that's what the foundation of Vacuum Pro is built on. So to start with, I want to look at a really general overview of how the whole sound generation process works. We basically hit notes on our keyboard, and it triggers our soft synth, in this case, Vacuum Pro. And basically, the oscillator is the starting point for generating the sound. And we can choose between a variety of waveforms, sawtooth wave, sine wave, triangle wave, etc. And that's the raw waveform that's used in creating the sound. Now, in Vacuum Pro, we can have two oscillators and we have two parts. So there's multiple oscillators available as the raw source material. And we can also continuously scroll between the shapes rather than selecting one or the other. We can dial continuously between them. So we set the actual sound source via the oscillators, and then we run them through filters to sculpt the frequency response of the sound. There's different kinds of filters, high pass, low pass, etc. You can have resonant frequencies that boost certain areas. And once we filter the sound, we run it through an amplifier stage, most commonly characterized by an amp envelope, where we control the volume and shape of the sound over time, meaning the attack of the sound, how quickly it decays, sustain the release, that kind of thing. And we can also have some global controls that affect the overall blend of these three elements, like portamento effects, glide times, and in the case of Vacuum Pro, there's some nice effects processing. There's a chorus, phaser, delay, and there's an arpeggiator. And also we have modulators, and this is a key part of subtractive synthesis, which basically allow us to animate or automate the sound shaping parameters in any of these sections dynamically over time, and typical modulators are envelopes, which are shapes that we use and apply to different controls here to automate them over time. And LFOs, which are sort of repeating cyclical patterns that will animate controls in a regular and repeating way. So let's take a closer look at Vacuum Pro. And to start with, I want to look at the signal flow specific to Vacuum Pro here. So we have the two oscillators where we select our basic sound source and we run that through a mixer section there's some drive controls to saturate the sound and even a ring modulator so we mix the two together and then it's run through the filter section and there's different types of filters there's a low pass high pass band pass and we can run them either in series parallel or complex mode where they feed into each other and finally through the output section the amplifier the adsr attack decay sustain release envelope so let's look now more closely at vacuum pro itself and we'll look at the main sections here now, first of all, we can break the interface down into three global areas. We have the master section on top here, and these have controls that pertain to the entire instrument. We can work with part A and part B separately up here in the left. We can turn each one on or off, adjust the volumes, call up presets for each of them, randomize certain aspects of each of them if we want, and restrict certain aspects from being randomized, like the oscillator, filter, envelope, modulation, amplifier section. And we have the general patch section over here calling up presets for the entire instrument and we can restrict specific aspects from being loaded in when we call up instruments we have an eco-friendly mode for cpu light versions we can control polyphony and we even have a smart mode here with some macro knobs these eight knobs control their counterparts in both part a and b together so that's the master section on top now the guts of the interface here is the synthesizer section and this is obviously the main sound sculpting area of the instrument. We have our two oscillators here, one and two. We dial continuously between the shapes over there. We can sync this oscillator to this oscillator. There's delay time that we can set for each oscillator uniquely. From there, it runs through this little mixer section that has drive control for saturating the sound and even ring modulation. From there, it can run through the filters over here. This one is switchable between a high pass and band pass filter. And this is a low pass filter and we can control various routings of the filters here. We can have them run in serial, parallel or complex mode where they feed into each other. And we'll look at examples of all this. And from here, we can modulate all this with these modulators over here. We have four envelopes. Envelope one and two can affect either the high pass filter or low pass filter or both. And we have typical envelope parameters here. Envelope three is the amp envelope, the output stage where we control the shape of the sound, the level of the sound over time, the attack, decay, sustain, release, etc. And envelope four is assignable over here. So these are the modulators and the LFOs are here. We have two of them. We can choose our cyclical shapes there. 
And we use the modulation section here to route what we want these modulation sources to control. So for example, I can set LFO2 to control pitch, for example. And we'll go through examples of all this. So we have the sound generators here, little mixer section, filters over here, modulators here. The output phase is over here. We have volume and pan, and we have even here dirt and dust or drift and dust, which add kind of the artifacts that are similar to the sounds that these synths generated when they got old, some kind of detuning effects. So we can age the sound metaphorically with these controls. And we have some global controls over here, portamento time with the glide control over here. And finally, at the bottom, we have the performance section, which control how the instrument responds to various controllers and playing. So we have our keyboard here. We have an arpeggiator we can turn on or off. We can set the rhythm of the arpeggiator, the mode if we want up or down or random. We have pitch and modulation wheels. And here we have some effects processing, chorus, phaser, delay, and finally a master width control and master output level. And there's even a couple of settings over here for the instrument. So that's an overview. Again, just to summarize, the master section over here controls parameters pertaining to the overall instrument. The synth section here pertaining to the sculpting of the sound, the two oscillators, filter section, the modulators, and the output section over here. And finally, the performance controls over here, some effects processing, arpeggiator, and modulation and pitch bend. So stay tuned, fasten your seatbelts. We're going to dig into Vacuum Pro in the next video.